Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimbal of the Lent, and I am finally here with the first in the playthrough series of A Most Fearful Sacrifice. This game is by Herman Lutman and published by Flying Pig Games. I've got an overview up on it already, and Gippy's Gal did a guesses unboxing on it, but this is going to be the actual playthrough of the game. All right, so the scenario we're doing here is going to be scenario four, and we flip to it. We have an unexpected encounter. And just to kind of let you guys see all this, it gives you a synopsis of what's going on. For this one, we're just gonna be doing the medium scenario because there is the, the large full day that's gonna determine how long the scenario plays out. I'll show you on the player aid here in a sec. It gives you the setup, which I've got the forces on the board over there, and then reinforcement schedule, which there is a lot of reinforcements. Shows all the Union troops. All the ones that are going to get added, and then down here we've got the re, uh, reinforcement schedule for the Confederates. But what we need to see is the special rules right here. This shows us where, uh, when the game starts, what parts of the map you're going to be using. And for us, you see, we are using the, the northern map. So we're using the top half of the game. Remember, two big mounted maps for this game. Really freaking awesome. Really cool map, I gotta say. this. Just a beautiful map, man. Just beautiful map. Uh, but we're, I wanted one that was big enough. I could do everything, you know, have something cool going on, but I just could not fit the, the two. So I found one that was a good size that I could use one whole half of the map. So that's what we're going with. And that gives you the, uh, the scenario cards and that's your, your starting card draw pile. Now that is important for us. And I did make a little concession to that. I've made a couple of changes since I am playing solitaire on this. And for this, just to kind of speed up play a little bit, I have cut out two of the random event cards from each side. So random union events, random Confederate events, instead of having eight, I'm doing six instead. That's not gonna change anything, but it's just gonna make the turn play just a little bit quicker. Now, key thing about this game is that they do have what's called key event cards that each side gets to pick and then the randoms. So that's where the eight number comes from. It's two plus six. So I just cut out the two because the what I'm effectively doing is instead of having two key cards that I pick for each side, I'm just going to leave it all up to chance. I'm just going to grab six random cards and that's what's going to be. And that's how I'm going to make the adjustment for solitaire play. It's not going to change anything as far as like sequence of play or any of that crap. Everything's going to run still the same. I'll still make all the calls for all the units and stuff. But this way, I'm just leaving it up to the dice gods on what's going to happen with those cards. Now, down here, this lets us know more cards and reinforcements. Basically, the stuff that you got to pull out and have ready to add to your, uh, your deck or to your division play sheets, which I'll show you guys over there here in a sec. And then there are some special rules here that have to do with commanders being taken out. Uh, we'll go over these if we have this situation arise. Down to the right, we got our victory conditions and it shows us the victory point hexes. Some are worth one, some are worth two, some are worth four. I think four is the highest, yeah. And then you get points for each one of the units that get taken out. But when you're first looking at this board, it might look like the, the Union is just stacked all over the place because there's blue counters here and then there's blue counters spread all across the board. No, there are units, right? All these union, uh, union pieces over here, these are all units, but these are the victory point counters. And let me zoom in so you guys can see this. Whoever is the last one to control it is going to have uh, control of that victory point hex. So you flip it over if a Confederate gets onto it, but they all do start out in Union hands. So that's why all the blue counters are here across the board. And of course, we've got big old Gettysburg right in there. And the starting Union, union forces are up there pushing across the hill. There's like a little valley right here. So they're kind of squared off with each other, but reinforcements are gonna be coming in across the board for both sides. All right, I also already have my deck shuffled up. Remember this is four cards short, 
right from what it's supposed to be because I did pull out two random events for each side so it's just six random each uh, each faction but we will start drawing those when we get playing over here and this is our turn track okay and if you look right there we've got our uh turn uh the game counter keeping track of what turn we are on we are starting at 9 a.m so it'll progress throughout the day and what i did to make things easier on myself is i went ahead and put all the reinforcements here on the blocks where they're going to be starting off so some do have multiple colors like these are confederate forces that are joining in and then underneath them i've got some union forces but I think the next hour, yeah, the next hour only has Union forces. So this first set of turns, it's going to be very, very Union heavy because they get units on each turn and the Confederates are only getting a few here and a few here. And then there's this huge stack of Union troops that come in and what is this? It's 9, 10, 11, 12, a 12 they get the huge stack. It's not until one o'clock that a huge stack of Confederate troops are going to come in. So they're gonna to have to be holding holding ground. I don't think they're gonna be pushing too hard uh, right there at the start. And then they do get the last little bit of reinforcements at 2 p.m. Now the scenario can go on for longer, but again, I'm not playing the whole day. I'm only playing up to three. So I didn't worry about any of the reinforcements past that. But I think this is a good way to handle it. That way, all my troops are here. I've got them all laid out. Then I just have to look in the scenario book to see where they're going to come in. And you guys can see that here on the scenario book, like, boom, these are union reinforcements. So when these come in, this is a bunch of the ones that are coming in at 12 p.m. They're going to be coming in at 4021 which should be, that's 38, 39, 40. So they're gonna be right here on the edge. So I'm gonna have to figure out which one of these is 21. Let's see if that's 20, that should be 21 right here. So they're gonna be coming in, uh, actually that makes sense, right here on the road uh, from the south and moving in towards Gettysburg. But you guys will see that as we play on. Now the other player aids we have, I've got two big ones set out here and I went ahead and folded them over because I'm trying to conserve space where I can because this game is massive, it has a lot going on. These are the division sheets, okay? Now I briefly touched on those in the overview video, but remember this is where it's going to give us some activations where units uh, get activated when we're doing our random draws from our deck, certain cards in here can activate the division card as well. This tells us what gets activated. You'll see that when we start playing into it. Now I'm matching these up for the most part. You guys can see here, this is third core, third core. This, um, this is their division activation card. I went ahead and grabbed out the other two that are getting activated as well. We've got another third core and a second core that's gonna get added, all right? So these division cards are gonna get thrown on here. There's a different sheet, a different side, I think it's on the other side of this, but I'm just gonna throw this second core here just to save myself uh, self a little bit of space. And this one's gonna go down here with third core. Same thing that we have going on up here with the Union forces. They've got first core up here is the first ones. And then I've got, I've got a stack of new activation cards that are going to get added to it as well. We've got a couple more of the first core, a couple more of the 11th core. So instead of grabbing out the other player aid, I'm just gonna throw 11th core down here. Again, it'll work for our purposes. And this one actually is a CIC activation, but it's gonna get added to the deck. So in other words, while we're playing the game, don't worry about these cards that I've set over to the side, just worry about these. And I have found these little black spots along the edge of the board are actually nice to place uh, extra counters that you might need, you know, for whatever purposes, admin type counters. All right, and the only other change that I made that you guys uh, did see if you watched the overview is some of the player aids I have printed out. So it's got bigger print, but some of the ones I'll use will be the original ones as well. Remember, you can download these from the Flying Pig website, or you can go to BGG and download new files as well, whichever works for you. But yeah, you're definitely gonna have to print off some new, uh, new player aids unless you've got Superman levels of eyesight. 
All right, so when we're starting out here, we've got to do our command decision phase. And this is where we're assigning cards, choosing if we're leaving out uh, any cards for extra artillery bombardment, choosing our key events, all that type of stuff. Now, when we're starting out here, we've only got one division card, each one of those ones, the third core for the Confederates, and what was it, first, I believe, or 11th, what, no, first core for the Union. Those are the ones that start there, the only ones we have, so we don't really have to worry about placing those. But as the game does progress, we are going to have to choose priority because that can get uh, come into play when we're doing our core draw cards. And sometimes you'll be able to activate first priority or second priority, you know, get choices on it. And very rarely, if ever, that third priority. And that's one of the things I really like about this game is you have to make that decision who is most important, like which division is most important, the, the one I have to do something with this coming turn, and then, you know, make that choice. Again, like I said, we're not worrying about the key event cards just to make it easier, again, because it's solitaire play, we're not gonna worry about it. So for us, six random cards, they're shuffled in each turn, and I am gonna change that up. So there are a stack of event cards for each side. I've already randomly drawn six for each faction, and then on each turn, I'm gonna mix that original six back in here, shuffle it up real good, draw out another six, and that's how I'm gonna handle the uh, the random cards. That way we're not even worried about drawing, uh, picking two to use. I'm leaving it all up to fate on what's going to happen. And if you're playing this game solitaire, I think that's probably the way to go with it because otherwise you're making choices. And I find when you're playing in solitaire, especially if your head's up like this, the, the more choices that you take out of your hands, the better. You know, just let the game kind of play out in front of you. All right, so like I said, we already built our card draw pile, but before we get to that step is that preliminary bombardment. And what that is, is each side in this phase, they get one artillery brigade gets to fire. So Union goes, then Confederate goes, and then for each event card you left out, you get to fire an extra preliminary, uh, preliminary bombardment, okay? So you have to make that choice here if you have your, uh, your stack. So when you've got your little stack, before you get to this phase, before you, the Union player and the Confederate player have put their random events, before they put their random events into this deck, they will keep out one for each extra brigade that they wanna fire, okay? I'm not doing that to start off with. We'll just start with one preliminary bombardment for each side, but later on, I might start doing that, remove some of these event cards. But those event cards can have big swings, so you have to decide, do I wanna shoot now or do I wanna have that event later? All right, so now we are on our actual bombardment phase, which is really the beginning of the game, because now we're gonna start shooting. So we're gonna pick a artillery brigade for the Union, and we're gonna shoot at the uh, Confeds, uh, whoever's in range, and then same for the Confederate player. And just to show you guys real quick before we do start that, there is a fire combat ranges, All right? So infantry, their range is, is pretty well negligent. It, long range for them is two so they they're effectively just firing one hex away but when it comes to our rifled or smoothbore or whatever type cannons these are the numbers that you're going to be looking at rifled cannons have the little r smoothbore have s and then mixed so if it's rifled and smoothbore you have to use this bottom row down here so if it's rifled we have canister which is you know buckshot but effective range is up to six Long range is up to 10. Smooth bore is one for canister, five and eight. And then mixed is six and 10, but there is a extra addendum. You see with those three little asterisks down there. And where is it? Yeah, mixed artillery at effective or long range. They do get a extra, a extra negative shift on the, uh, the fire combat table when we're doing that. All right, I'm back. Sorry I had to break away for a sec, but we're gonna go ahead and finish out this video with the fire combat step for our artillery brigades. And looking at it, Union does get to go first. 
but unfortunately their artillery brigades are not in a good position. There's one here that they can use, Tibble, but his other guys like down below. And out of the way, so he's not gonna be able to join in. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, they're on a victory point hex, and then they get Calvary, 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 Calvary. They got nothing but Calvary up here. So that's not gonna work too well for him. Calvary probably do better just dipping back and letting the Confederates come in and then, you know, ride back up on them. Maybe, I don't know, we'll have to see how that kind of plans out. I'm not like a great grand strategist or anything, so I don't expect, you know, perfect, Gettysburg uh, tactics for me. I've never been a huge Civil War fan, but I love the game, like the, the game mechanics so much. I was like, screw it. I am definitely playing this game. All right. So for our Union guys, we've got a four strength power rifled cannon here. And I was thinking he can take a shot here at that infantry because that's one of the stronger infantries they've got sitting there try to do some damage to those guys before they can push down into like this town, cause any trouble. Because they got cavalry up there, but that's a little farther shot. And this should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, firing him at them will get him at his good range. So looking here for our rifled, it's six. So it's smooth bore be less and mixed would be six, but you get some other stuff. And I think we're gonna get some column shifts on this. Targets not in woods, dismounted cavalry. We are firing over a town. We're firing over woods and town. So we're gonna get a negative shift there. Yeah, you know, not firing over any units. We're not at a, we're not hitting with that three thing. They're not bivouacked. Target is in a town hex. Yeah, is he in a town X? Yeah, I think they're all. All in town X. Yeah, they're all in town hexes. He's gonna get a lot of negative shifts. He's getting a negative one here for firing over. He's getting negative two here for the target being in a town hex. Uh, I don't think there's anything that's gonna boost him. Yeah, ooh, smoothbore artillery canister at, uh, artillery at canister range gets some good bonuses. Okay, well, let's see. With our strength point of four, and we have to do, good God, what a horrible, horrible shot they're getting here. They're rolling on the one. All right, screw it. Well, we'll take, I'm not gonna change it now. I don't think the shot's gonna be good at anyone that he takes it because there's trees, there's town everywhere he takes over here. So I'll stick with what I originally said. All right, so fire combat here. We've got the three die that we're gonna roll. Black, white, and red, you're always gonna have to roll these three, except for assault combat, assault combat, you know, sticking and jabbing the hand a little bit different, but we'll see that later. But the two dice that we're gonna pay attention to for our attack on our combat results table, gonna be black and white. So blacks is tens, uh, white is ones. And then this, I like this, I like this red die because that comes into the cohesion rating of our units here, where we're going to be comparing him uh, to see what type of damage, all right? So this tells us where on the table, and this tells us how much damage. So let's see what roll we're gonna get here. Oh, and before I do roll, uh, just FYI for you guys, I'm leaving out the doubles rule for this game. If you roll doubles on the black and the white, it's like some special events thing. I will never remember that. I will just, I know I'm gonna forget it, so I'm gonna just leave it out, flat out. It is an optional rule, so yeah, we're not gonna worry about that. All right, here we go. Oh, that's week 21. Oh, but they got high. Well, actually, I think high is good. No, high is good for the, 
No, high is good for the defender. Okay, so that's a 21. And 21 from where he was at, it's no effect. And then we come down and we look at his rating. He's got a four and he is supported because he's got other people there with him, right? So his cohesion rating is not gonna go down. So he, he's staying at a four, which means it's four plus the six. So that means it's actually a 10. So it's no effect and free fire there, right? That FF, they get to fire. And basically it's a free attack the person gets because the, uh, the attack did so poorly. Um, there's no one for him to shoot though. So unfortunately that's not gonna do any good for him. Okay, now while we did our union attack, their brigade, like I said, they've got one here and they've got another cannon down low, but he's out of range, so he's not gonna be doing anything. The brigade that we can attack with for our Confederates though, we've got the, was it Peregrine? What are these guys called? Flip this around. Uh, Peregrine, Peregrine? My eyesight's getting bad. Pegram, Pegram. Okay, now unfortunately, these guys are not all stacked together or adjacent. These two are adjacent. What infantry? Oh, oh there's three or uh, two rather. Oh, I forgot there was another cannon here. Oh, yay. Okay, that's, that's good stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is mixed cannons. This is two mixed cannons. Two mixed cannons, a, a strength rating of four, and then a smoothbore cannon at a, a rating of eight. That's good stuff. I wonder, yeah, because they're adjacent and stacked together, I can fire all of these guys together. That would be, what is that, 16? Yeah, that would be a 16 shot. Is there anyone within range of that smoothbore cannon? But we're gonna have to change up a target maybe, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, what is in here? <gasps> yeah, those guys, there's two there. There's these two, but I mean, this is a one. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they could fire there at that three, maybe do some good damage to him. Uh, that other one way up there, he's gonna be out of range. Okay, so I have to use the most detrimental if I do that. And the shortest range is the smooth bore at five, but what would be most detrimental Okay, so firing across that, yeah, yeah, okay. They're gonna get the negative shift for, okay, yeah, 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 definitely. Because artillery firing at effective or long range, if I use it this way as mixed, then this gets them a negative one shift there and a negative two shift here. So that's a negative three shift. That's the worst way I can fire those guys. So we'll go with that. We'll, we'll definitely give them the, the big negatives. But since I'm hitting them with all of it, and we're going, to, we're going to target this hex. Instead of the three, we're going to target these two individual units, try to hit both of them. Sure. Yeah, negative three. The highest we can go is 10 and then we're gonna shift down three of them. So one, two, three, so we're on five. So that's what we're rolling on. And then we'll apply that test individually to everyone. Now I still have one cannon left down here. He's not firing with them because he's not together, so he's not part of this attack, but it is the same brigade. So everyone with the same name gets to fire. If they're adjacent, same hexes, they can fire together for the most part, and if they're not, then they have to fire separately. But this guy's rifled, so we'll target someone else with him. All right, final. Okay, here's our attack for Pegram cannons. No! Gosh! Gosh darn it! Oh, how did I get the same roll twice? Uh, 21 on a 5 is going to be nothing. No effect, and... Uh, or it doesn't matter what they got because they're not going to be able to hit anyone at the same range. So nothing. Crap, 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 crap. Okay. What junk 
and we'll try to roll good up here we're gonna target straight across because if i target straight across over here uh, with this rifle that should be six x's one two three four five six yeah six x's there's a little little town there yeah that's a little town and it does cross that hmm Actually, now looking at it again, I think I gave too many negative shifts up here for this artillery attack, but it wouldn't matter anyway since they rolled so poorly. So it doesn't matter because these units were not in a town hex. So he is, though. Yeah, that's crappy. I don't think I can do really anything. If I get rifle here, he's not in a town hex. The, what's killing these guys on their shots is the fact that they're kind of in this ravine here. And there's a ridge, there's a ridge, and they're kind of plinking away at each other. But firing across these buildings and these woods is causing a problem because they're getting those negative shifts. But if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, if I target him instead, he's not in a town hex. So he won't get the negative two, and it'll simply be a negative one for firing across those towns. So yeah, or firing across the woods, towns. Same thing. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna do that instead. That's gonna put us on the three column for this rifled unit instead of all the way down there to one, that's a better shot. All right, come on, big money, no more 21s. You gotta be kidding me. I'm starting to wonder, Are this, what the hell? There's no way these dice are weighted that bad, but I've got a two three times in a row. Five, three, two, no, it's rolling good. Five. Uh, this I don't know, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll switch over to a, a different dice tower, a different uh, different set of dice, because I think I got some weighted ones that are colored that'll work for this. But um yeah, I do want to get this nice skull dice tower I saw. Anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, it's no effect. Yeah, I cannot believe the attacks went bad. 21, 21, and a 22 as far as the, the first round of shots went. So nothing really looking good. But as we continue on, we can put these artillery in kind of like this a defensive formation for the Confederates, have them keep firing. And the fact that they're on this ridge can force the Union to kind of fall back because they can fall back here at a lower elevation and get out of the range and line of sight of those guns, which will force the Confederates to have to drag their guns all the way up here through this town, across these rivers, you know, it just bad form. They could drag their guns up over here, maybe take over that ridge, but it would be good if the Confederates could push all the way up to here, gain this ridge or even this ridge here and be firing down there, if they could do that, they would be doing all right. But we'll see, we'll see how this plays out. I have not played this type of game system before. So the, the drawing, the activating the units, I am very much looking forward to trying this. The cannons definitely let me down starting out though. Well, we'll see how this goes. All right, you guys stay tuned. I will be back with the next one and we'll start drawing from our deck and activating all the different units. All right, you guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.